This story is so important, I think, and yet it has got so little traction for reasons which will probably become apparent as we discuss it. But Dominique Samuels, who is a commentator, you may have heard of her, she admitted on social media that an article that she wrote, and I'm putting that in inverted commas, for the Daily Mail, which was headlined The Clash of the Royals was about culture, not colour, was not in fact written by her. She also said, I was asked to be the face of a ghost-written negative verging on racist piece by the Daily Mail last year on the Notting Hill Carnival and eventually turned it down because it was a complete misrepresentation of what I witnessed whilst I was there. Now, Dominique Samuels is, of course, a a right-wing commentator and a black woman. And she has been accused on several occasions of of holding opinions and encouraging attitudes which are harmful to black people. But if what she is saying is correct, and these are all allegedly, allegedly allegations, just covering myself legally there. But if what she is saying is true, then that means that white journalists are buying the picture and byline of black journalists to lend their opinions on race more legitimacy. That's a huge scandal, if it's true. And yet, I couldn't find very much in in terms of coverage of this. Everybody's talking about it on social media, but in what we might term mainstream media, it hasn't really been picked up. So joining us to discuss this is Femi Oluwale. Thank you so much. You were one of the people who did pick it up. I watched your YouTube video on it, and I thought it was great. First of all, let me ask you, I was shocked when I saw this from Dominique Samuels, and then I thought, am I being naive? Were you shocked? I wasn't shocked um, because racists might be unintelligent, but they're not stupid. They know that white people can't go on air and say that they hate the people of this color or that color and expect to maintain mainstream appeal. They have to find other ways of doing it. But the thing is, they don't actually have to come out and explicitly say that anymore What? because racism is the status quo. We know that we have a country where, according to Oxford Research and even the government's own race report, if you have a black sounding name, you have to send 80% more job applications when you're applying for a job to get a call back. We know that police stop you seven times more if you're black than if you're white. We know that uh, the United Nations said this government is deliberately trying to normalize white supremacy. So racism is the status quo. So all they have to do is deny that racism exists, which is why you get articles like the one that Dominique Samuels wrote saying that ra- that the clash of the royals wasn't about race, it was about culture, just trying to deny that there's a problem of racism in order to protect it. And now she's come out and said this. It, it, there are parallels to be drawn, aren't there? And this is something that you point out in your video with some comments that were recently made by Dawn Butler on my colleague James O'Brien's podcast, where she was saying that the the racist policies of this government are being perpetuated by, let's call them a melanated cabinet. <laughs> and And I remember speaking about this at the time and saying, you know, diversity, visual diversity doesn't mean much if the, the people who are in the cabinet are not advocating for demographics of people like them who mm. come from the same place or who look like them. Yeah. But the accusation when you say something like that is, well, are you saying there's only one way to be black and mm. you must have a certain opinion? So what would your response be to that? You're, you, it's not about being the wrong kind of ethnic minority. It's just about being a bad person. If you know that um, racism exists and you're deliberately denying it, you know that you are hurting people from your from your ethnicity. And if uh, given that there are ways to fix these problems, like the one I mentioned about um, job discrimination, if you uh, make it mandatory that people use blind CVs when they're applying for a job, if you improve history education to improve people's attitudes about people from other countries, those things can be done. But if you have people saying, like uh, Kemi Badnock, actually literally saying that it is illegal for teachers to teach that white privilege exists, even though white privilege is a matter of governmental fact, because as as I just mentioned with those stats, you're stopped more by by police, it's harder to get a job. It's just trying to prevent us actually fixing the problem of racism. Mm. And it's, it's interesting to me that the same people who will say, I am colorblind, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't care about the color of the skin, it's about the content of the character, are also people who are clearly more likely to find a piece written by a black journalist on race more persuasive. Mm-hmm. That's the only explanation for it, isn't it? That it, it's a, 
I guess, a form of racial gatekeep- gatekeeping. Yeah, so uh, it's I refer to it as Kanye syndrome because there will always be somebody who is willing to step up and support racism if they think it will boost their image. We saw it with Kanye because it doesn't bother him. He's he's got his millions. He's he's, he's safe. Kevin Badnock got a, got a safe government job. Uh, um, Dominic Samuels was writing for the Daily Mail. These people are fine. It is the working class black people who will find it harder to get a job, who will get stopped by police, potentially die, or even be chased. We saw that 13-year-old boy who was chased by police simply for going on a charity bike ride with his father. They're the people who will actually suffer from this. And there will always be people that are willing to essentially undermine, pull the ladder up, um, black people and ethnic other ethnic minorities. You're pretty well connected. Do you know of anyone else who has been asked to do this, to lend their, their face and byline to a piece? I personally don't know of, of anybody, but, but unfortunately, I, well, unfortunately, I don't hang out with that many right-wing commentators <laughs> in my personal <laughs> life. Um, but it is, I mean, it's been referred to as uh, digital blackface. Uh, obviously not the same connotations in terms of mocking black people, but definitely trying to use their, their, their skin to uh, sell racist, Im- racist messages. Mm. I, d- I was reading a piece one of the few pieces I could find by Lester Holloway uh, for Hacked Off about this. And he actually had quite an optimistic take on what this means. He's put, it's another sign that reactionaries are losing. Just as the papers are slowly dying, so too is fear and intolerance being eroded. Do you agree with that? That we're getting a less, a more tolerant country? Yeah, the fact that they're having to hire black journalists mm. to to lend legitimacy to these views shows that these views are inherently unpopular. Well, that, I mean, that's the thing. Um, I'm obviously going to do my usual spiel about electoral reform, but we consistently have governments that are more right-wing than the people they supposedly represent because the to- in every election since World War II, apart from three, the majority of people have voted for parties to the left of the Conservative Party. We are a progressive voting country, but unfortunately our politicians are more right-wing than we are. And so I do believe, especially with Gen Z coming up, we are a much more progressive country than our politicians would have us believe. I mean, there was a recent study by the Financial Times which found that if you are boomer, uh, silent generation, Gen X, then at the age of 35, you're five points less conservative than the national average, but by the age of 70, you're five points more conservative. But for millennials at age 35, they're 15 points less conservative than the national average. Millennials, Gen Z, we've broken the wheel. We are Mm. going the other way. I, I suppose because the policies don't start benefiting, benefiting us in middle age in the way that they have traditionally have. Oh, oh yeah, I mean, uh, it, if you look at the, the legacy that has been left by things like Brexit, by things like Trump, young people did not vote for that. We did not vote for Boris Johnson, a man who once said that the problem in Africa is not that we were once in charge, but we're not in charge anymore. That kind of stuff does not represent the new generations that are coming up. And so eventually these people will be replaced. And so things like getting black people to to write racist articles is the last da- last gasp of a dying generation. 